Yes, sir. Corn stream, aka scenes I saw. We talking about movies and TV series we saw recently and kick it with KCMC. Appreciate you joining me. First and foremost, good times. Black again. Saw this on Netflix. No endorsement. Ten episodes, one season. Um this is essentially an anim animated version slash continuation of the classic show Good Times, um, which is based in like the 70s or whatever the case may be, a black family living in a high-rise apartment or projects as they call it, and them just living as a family, their struggles financially and economically. Now, this is essentially like like the grand their grandchildren, or, or whatever you want to call it, like a continuation of generations of that same family still living in that same apartment, same project in Chicago, which I never knew was Chicago, but it's in Chicago. Bro, I'm like, all right. Now, what I want to say is when I first watched this, it seemed very racist, stereotypical, the most racist, stereotypical black stuff that, I, that you could ever imagine. All the stereotypical black shit you can think of was in this cartoon, bro. I promise you that. Uh, a drug dealing and gambling baby, first and foremost. Uh, women who encourage twerking, an uneducated son, a consciously woke daughter, a religious and contradicting mother, and a father who struggles to keep a low-paying job. All within this family. <laughs> Just this family, this family alone, all within this family. That's not that's not even speaking on the other characters in this. So when you first watch it, it's it's cringy. It's hard to watch. Pause, cause it's like, what? Like for real, y'all doing niggas like this? But then on the other hand, I must say this, if I'm being honest, by episode nine and ten, I did get the laughing. I started to look at it objectively. I was like, it's a cartoon. I saw who the executive producer was, one of them, which I'll speak up in a minute, and I said, okay, I understand why it's like this. I understand the format. And I started to laugh at some of the stuff. I said, okay, this this is a little funny. They got some funny moments. So after a while, it kind of grew on me. But what I want to say is this. One of the executive producers are Seth, is Seth McFarlane, the white guy who created Family Guy, The Cleveland Show, in other shows, including this. Family Guy has a baby who uh, uh, is a white family, a baby who wants to uh, eliminate or take out his mom. Uh, the Cleveland show has a baby, also a talking baby, Rollo, with an afro of the Cleveland family, a black family. And he just always talking a little slick black stuff or whatever. And then now you got a baby right here, a black family, who has blonde hair and a D cut in his, in his hair called, his name is Dalvin, who sells drugs and gambles. From Seth McFarlane, I'm not surprised. Overweight husband with a nice slim fit woman as his wife. And he's a dummy, essentially. Yeah, that's Seth McFarlane's formula. So I kind of, I was like, all right, it ain't like this is the first time he's done this. I get it. Seth McFarlane does this all the time. I don't like the Cleveland show. Don't agree with it. It's boring as hell. I don't agree with him doing the black stuff, but all right, cool. Seth McFarlane doing this. This is his third show. I get it. Cool. Then you got Steph Curry, who's an executive producer. Cree Summers is involved. Slink Johnson is one of the voices. JB Smooth, one of the voices of many black people who are involved. This is what I want to say with that. Do we want to blame them in regards to being part of this super coon ass cartoon? A part of me want to say this is accepting a job. It's consistent money. They're actors. They're doing what they have to do. Do would we rather white voices who are willing to do this do black people? No, because I'd be really upset then. So I kind of get it with them accepting this. Well, what I do want to say is this is some bullshit. And I can't support this, dog. I can't support this. Why even take the name Good Times? Y'all could have named this something completely different. To name this Good Times to make it seem like this is a continuation of the classic, which now that I think about it, was the classic series on some cool shit. 
Maybe it was for the 70s. Maybe it was and we all didn't even notice it. But I feel like now that you look back, you're like, uh, damn, damn, damn. And all the other stuff. Essentially, the black father was not there for their family. However you want to call it, however he was gone, he was not there for his family. So maybe it was some stereotypical coon stuff too. All I want to say is I can't support it, bro. I laughed a few times towards the end of the series. Other than that, good times. No. Black again. No. The cartoon. No. This Netflix. No. No, 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 no. No. Good times. Netflix. Again, I say no on this. Let me know what you think. Go off in the live chat in the comments. Call into the show. 313-466-4386. I spoke a, I spoke a little bit too long on that. Pause. So we're going to move on to the next project that we did. Watch, I should say. This was a stand-up comedy series or special from Neil Brennan. Saw this on Netflix, no endorsement, called Crazy Good. See the cover art right there? Crazy Good. Um, So this was what, like 53 minutes stand-up comedy, like I said, starring Neil Brennan. He riffs in the stand-up special on cryptocurrency, social media flexes, uh, compliments during intimacy and the link between greatness and mental health. What I want to say is, yeah, Neil Brennan, as you can see, he's a white man. I just want to point that out. It's not always about race, but it kind of is. And that's just life. Literally, it's not about race, but it kind of is. Um, with that being said, white comedy is different from black comedy, Indian comedy, Hispanic comedy, etc., etc. So me watching this, I kind of didn't expect me to relate to too much. But some of it was funny. When he made his jokes about the comedy, I mean about religions doing commercials, that was pretty funny to me. That was pretty funny. Um, the link between greatness and mental health also. That was actually pretty. It made sense. It was like one of those moments where like, yeah, this is the truth. And they say there's always a little bit of truth in comedy. Sometimes there's moments in stand-up comedy where they're just speaking the truth and it's not necessarily funny. It's just the truth and relatable. So I don't know if it makes it a good comedy special, but yeah, he was saying some good, some real stuff in some clever ways, I will say. So interesting piece, nonetheless. Neil Brennan, crazy good, crazy good on Netflix. Would I recommend any replay value? No replay value for me personally, but I recommend it. Let me know what you think if you checked it out. Neil Brennan, Crazy Good on Netflix. 54 minutes, no endorsement, by the way. Go off in the live chat in the comments or call into the show. 313-466-4386. Another movie that we did check out. <clears throat> I know I'm late on this. Bob Marley, One Love. We saw this on Paramount Plus, no endorsement. This was an hour 47 minutes, a biopic slash drama, whatever you want to call it, starring Kingsley Benadier and Lashana Lynch, who played Rita, I believe. And Kingsley played uh, Bob Marley, if I'm not mistaken, a.k.a. Nesta Marley, which I just learned that was his real name, his government name. But anyway, celebrate the life of an icon who inspired generations through his message of love, peace, and unity. And one love discover Bob Marley's peaceful story of overcoming adversity and the journey behind his revolutionary music that changed the world. I'm okay. I'm gonna be honest. I did not immediately go see this movie that came out in February of 2024 because I was not interested in Bob Marley's story. If I'm being honest, someone who was born in the late 90s, grew up in the late 80s, excuse me, grew up in the 90s. In my teenage years through the 2000s, an adult in the 2020s and whatnot, I mean 2010s, this is what I want to say. I didn't necessarily care about Bob Marley's story. I don't necessarily like Bob Marley's music. I don't listen to it like, I want to hear some Bob Marley right now. Even when I am smoking, I don't necessarily go to Bob Marley. I go to Outkast, Spolioli Dope Delicious, and other types of good vibe music. I don't go to Bob Marley. So I didn't care about the story. With this movie overall, what I will say is it's crazy because they did not start with like his childhood and beginning. They went from him being a grown ass adult with kids, already a musician, 
going into his career and starting at the point where he was throwing a concert in the middle of a civil war Jamaica was having between political parties in the 70s. I don't care about none of that. Now, that probably actually that was obviously the part of his life and career where he became great and a worldwide icon. I get it and died basically because of a toe cancer because of cancer through his toe crazy. But nonetheless, uh, he died at what? 36 lived a, a very abundant life within those short years. I will say other than that, this project was mid, bro. And this is coming from somebody who didn't have interest in watching it. And you would think I would watch it and be like, it changed my whole perspective. No, it didn't. I still really didn't have no interest in his story. I didn't grow up necessarily watching or listening to Bob Marley, I should say. That's just me. Let me know what you think. Go off in the live chat in the comments or call into the show. 313-466-4386. Um, last movie slash series that we did watch, this was on Peacock. So, uh, no endorsement, by the way, on Peacock. Drive Away Dolls. This was an hour, 24 minutes of action slash comedy. Starring Margaret Qualley, Qualey, and Geraldine v Viswanana, Viswana, Viswanathan, whatever. In search of a fresh start, two women embark on an impromptu road trip to Tallahassee, Florida. However, things quickly go ar awry when they cross paths with a group of inept criminals along the way. Essentially, they did. Just, they found this briefcase and some type of basket in their trunk with a head and some type of uh, intimacy parts, aka dildos. I'll just say that this wasn't for me. Uh, a a, thir a thirty-something-year-old black male, heterosexual with a family, wasn't for me. wasn't for me. Uh, wasn't my type of comedy. I, I was looking at it some parts like. Am I supposed to laugh at this? <laughs> Am I supposed to laugh at this? Uh, but then I was like, uh, it was parts where I was like, okay, yeah, they can't be serious. I guess this is the, I guess this is the funny part. <laughs> what a, what a, a, a decapitated head and all types of crazy stuff. It was crazy. Um, so not, not for me. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. Um, for nobody of my demographic, but maybe you like it. Maybe you did like it. Let me know what you think. Go off in the live chat in the comments. Call into the show. 313-466-4386. <laughs> I think that's pretty much all I have, man. I ain't got nothing else. I ain't got nothing else, man. I ain't got, ain't got no thinking out loud, man. So we're just going to scape up out of here. Do me a favor. Kick it with KCMC on all social media at KIW. KCMC, that's Kick It With KCMC on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, TikTok. I'm on all that at KIW KCMC. That's Kick It With KCMC, the abbreviations KIW KCMC. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all social medias. Show some love to my sponsor, also Team Elite. They on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, also at TeamElite313.com or TE313. No, I'm sorry. The social media is TeamElite313. T-E-A-M-E-L-I-T-E-313. -E -E and check out their premium urban-based athleisure wear as well as all of these episodes to kick it with KC and Unk Talk on TeamElite313.com. T-E-A-M-E-L-I-T-E 313.com or T-E 313.com. Show some love to my sponsor, Team Elite. Check out their apparel, their premium casual t-shirts, sweatshirts, hoodies, tech fleece, jogger sets, varsity sets, all on their website, Team Elite 313.com. Ask your mom. Appreciate you. Didn't mean to flash that. That's my drink right there. Ain't got no sponsors on this show, so we ain't never endorsing nobody. Hey, check out my singles, Juice and Hands and Knees. It's all in the description below in the links. Check those out. Let me know what you think. Also, show some love to Unk Talk. That's on Team Elite Media. Also on the same YouTube channel, 
Unk Talk. Subscribe to Unk Talk. Subscribe to the channel in general. Like it, share it. We appreciate it. Hit the alert so you know when we're going live. Other than that, we're going to do another show tomorrow. We're considering this a Saturday night show. We're going to do two shows tomorrow on Sunday. And we're going to do uh, sports and news, popular topics. That's all coming up. Other than that, appreciate you for showing love. You're kicking with KCMC.